According to the book Propaganda and Persuasion by Jowd and O'Donnell, through the use of truth, half-truth, and limited truth, propaganda can alter one's perception of truth, beliefs, and behavior. Ever since the 20th century, the most prominent medium of propaganda is film. By definition, a propaganda film is a film actively propagating certain religious, political, cultural, or commercial messages. In this video, I say how a media of film can affect an individual's beliefs and actions will act as my main thesis by examining the cultural context, film themes, and characteristics of two distinguished propaganda films thought to have revolutionized their respective times. Battleship Potemkin and The Goddess. See director Sergei Eisenstein's Battleship Potemkin, a silent film introduced to the world in 1925. The Battleship Potemkin, the brainchild of the great director Sergei Eisenstein, told the story of how a group of sailors revolt against their tyrannical regime of superior officers. As in 1934, another revolutionary propaganda silent film was introduced. Released on the other side of Asia, The Goddess by Wu Yonggang shocked the mass public of China. The film told the story of a loving young mother whose only source of support for her son is through prostitution. While devoted, the mother's profession ultimately leads to her downfall in the oppressive society of Shanghai. While both films are considered cinematic masterpieces, as with propaganda, these films hold a much larger meaning in the context of their respective times, both being released for different intentions. Despite being released at a time of Soviet rule, Battleship Potemkin's story itself is based in 1905, based on a historically true battleship named Prince Potemkin of Tardia at a time of Russian monarchy rule, with Tsar Nicholas II at the top of the monarch. While the riches seemed to have lavish lifestyles, the working class lived a much crueler life. Through this pain and suffering, communism began spreading as a popular ideology. As such, the hatred for the bourgeoisie began spreading as the communist ideals of wealth distribution and the working class takeover of the economy drove the overwhelming working class to overtake the bourgeoisie in the Russian Revolution of 1917. Battleship Potemkin's depicted mutiny is essentially a portrayal of such a time of revolution. The working class's harsh reality is paralleled by the sailors aboard the ship, and the cruelty and inhumane nature of the Tsarist regime is heavily emphasized. The film celebrated communism, unity, and ultimately, the new Soviet order. The Goddess, on the other hand, pushes a different agenda. In contrast with the Battleship Potemkin, the film consistently displays opposing socio-political ideals. This is a representation of 1930s Shanghai. Feudalism tradition remained constant, despite upheaval and modernization and Western influence, making the city the Paris of Asia, while being under threat by the Japanese invasion. Inspired by the May the 4th movement, a group called for a more modern society and a break from feudalistic Confucianism, the film was to express these radical left-wing ideologies and to appeal to the emancipation of Chinese women. The film was a popular medium. Despite the KMT's ban on any communist ideals in cinema, director Wu Yonggang disguised these ideals in such a melodramatic soap opera fashion. While the ending of The Goddess seemed convenient, socio-economic Marxism was left prominent through the lack of character names, as the lack of identity reached out to the general public of the women of China. While the goddess operates on a literal level, depicting a young mother's mother facing oppressive society whose emancipation is through education, the film is also a symbolic representation of contemporary China. The dichotomy of the image of China between prostitution and the lovingness of a young mother is the true representation of the film's ideology. This is further seen in the title of the film, as the goddess is both a celebration of motherhood and a euphemism for prostitution. While there is an abundance of elements that make Battleship Potemkin and the Goddess outstanding propaganda films, it's hard to forget the unprecedented use of montage in both as a means of propaganda. Perhaps most notable of the 1925 epic Battleship Potemkin was its stellar archetypal representation of the Soviet Union's uncovered form of influence, montage editing. Perhaps most famous is the dialectical montage sequence The Odessa Steps. The montage employs two main methods to push emotion and propaganda to the audience, rhythm and tone. Firstly, rhythm. Throughout the entire sequence, we see a long shot of the uniformed soldiers walking down the Odessa steps massacring the masses, while occasionally the shot is cut with medium close shots or close-ups of the townspeople's graphic and gory injuries. In an inhumane fashion, the long shot remains steady and consistent when cut to the soldiers, presenting them as an unstoppable force. The townspeople are powerless and forced to flee chaotically. Eisenstein purposely uses this conflict and juxtaposition between the steady, immovable, and sanguinary force of the soldiers, and the chaotic and bloodshed of the townspeople, who to present the power gap between the two. The soldiers are seen looking and pushing the townspeople down the Odessa steps, rejecting the townspeople's attempts at climbing the Odessa steps, symbolizing the rejection of the working class climbing the social hierarchy. The working class's attempts are ultimately futile and are continued to be pushed down. Furthermore, Eisenstein also seen to implement tonal or emotional images, bringing out the symbolism in the shots. While the presentation of the Odessa steps being symbolic of the social hierarchy is a clear example, another striking occurrence was a shot of the only townsperson breaking the downwards movement of the shot and instead going upwards, as a mother is seen carrying her lifeless son towards the 
Nazi soldiers. This scene plays a shocking effect on the audience, almost a final attempt as, at bringing humanity to the inhumane. However, the morality of the Tsarist force remains unaltered, as ultimately, this attempt at peace has once again gone down. Eisenstein continues to use emotions through the use of still images of the lines by using the Kuleshov effect and certain cuts and camera angles. Eisenstein can make the still lion statue almost rise and stare down at the massacre disapprovingly. The camera work and mise-en-scene of the set perfectly encapsulates the power dynamic of the opposing forces, while certain shots appeal to the audience's pathos, with emotions of anger and fear to the audience, prompting an instinct of hatred to the Tsar's regime. Eisenstein had not hidden these intentions, seeing that the dramaturgy of the moving image, facilitated through conflicting montage sequences, can deliver the task of revolutionary art, bringing the viewer into a desired psycho-emotional state that would make one susceptible to the right ideological messages. In contrast, the goddess's montage is significantly shorter than the famous Odessa steps, being only 24 seconds in length, compared to Eisenstein's excruciating five minutes. However, this is not without reason. As aforementioned, filmmakers at the time with contrasting ideals to the government were heavily restrained, as the KMT con continued to reinforce high regulation in the cinema. Thus, Wu Yonggang was forced to disguise such ideologies in simple and seemingly trivial scenes, with this short montage being the most prominent example that presents ideologies, giving us a scope into the public's view on the government body at the time. As for the montage itself, Wu Yonggang's montage heavily uses tone and symbolism to push the propaganda. Furthermore, this montage presents the influence Eisenstein's montage theory had worldwide, as we see striking similarities with Eisenstein's The Odessa Steps and The Goddess. One such similarity we see is a large public fleeing chaotically from a smaller yet more powerful government body. The shots in The Goddess even parallel those of The Odessa Steps, as the sequence starts with a long shot, depicting the bustling streets of Shanghai as a sudden wave of police began to sweep the streets. Without hesitation, streets are seen to flee in chaos, retreating to their homes. Throughout, there are once again cuts of close-ups of the police's feet, a representation of the movement of the oppressive force. This short but effective montage sequence presents the oppressive nature of the police at the time, and the distaste the public felt for the government. However, what's even more interesting is where the goddess finds herself at the end of the sequence. Left with no options, the mother is seen forced into a dark alleyway, where she meets Thug, the boss. She's left with no choice but to stay with the thug. This short plot can be seen as a representation of the consequences of such oppressive forces, as several of the public are forced into the life of violence and criminality. Another drawn characteristic of these two propaganda films is the ability to distinguish and characterize the different societies and social classes in both films. In a generalized format, the purpose, to simplify the good and the bad for the audience. This can be seen in the first act, where the sailors are forced to face punishment of their mutiny. First, Eisenstein uses an aerial long shot, and shots from behind to provide a sense of unity and collectiveness of the two social groups, the sailors and the superiors. Eisenstein's composition of each shot further emphasizes straight lines and a clear divide between the two groups. While there is a divide, it can be seen that the large group of white uniformed sailors is an overwhelming numerical advantage compared to the black uniformed superior officers. This is a further representation of the number of divide between the working class and the bourgeoisie, and Marxism in the scene promoted an overthrow, giving power to the working class. Only through a collective conscious can the sailors rise and overthrow the superior officers. As for the aforementioned Odessa steps, Eisenstein in this case uses space and composition not to give power to the working class, instead of showing the oppression and tyranny of the Tsarist regime. The uniformed officers are kept in a straight line and move in synchronicity, presenting them as a collective. The BTS camera shot obscures the soldiers' face, further blends them, and de-individualizes each soldier, presenting their inhumane nature while placing the blame over the bourgeois brutality as a whole. Once again, Eisenstein emphasizes the need for unity, as the townspeople are disorganized and in chaos, this allowing them to be overwhelmed by soldiers. While it's clear that the townspeople outnumber the measly line of soldiers, their lack of the collective consciousness, and thus mistrust of the revolution, ultimately allows them to be purged. The goddess, on the other hand, attempts to use cinematic techniques to present the goddess as a female icon, through depicted as being entrapped trapped in the minimalistic society and everyday life. Ultimately, this comparison humanizes the young mother, appealing to her love and character instead of her profession. Yet despite her presented devotion, she's still in constant oppression by domineering figures such as the boss, or more prominently, society as a whole. Thus, by instinct, the audience has an altered view of contemporary society, beginning to characterize it with negative emotions. As the film progresses, we see a growing split between two identities, a representation of the loving and devoted mother at the male-dominant society. This is especially prominent, with a parallel in the introduction of the mother to the introduction of the thug. One notable scene is when the mother cradling her child looks up at the night sky, the Shanghai. This point of view cut ultimately shows her aspirations and hopes and dreams through the city. However, as we cut to the perspective of the thug, we see him replicate such movements, looking out into the window, and a replication of the previous landscape of Shanghai is once again shown. Using a double exposure technique, however, the true aspiration of the thug is shown. The mother in a faint vision appears atop the city. It's here when Wu Yonggang presents the male-dominant society. Through the perspective of a lustful thug, we see juxtaposition of the city and woman, an ultimate comparison, presented 
presenting the city as sexually driven. By using space and parallel themes, this stark contrast between the two characters attempts to show that despite her profession, ultimately the mother is a good person. It's a male dominant society that the presents the social ills and that they are the root of the issue. In the end, we're left with two propaganda films, with different intentions and cultural context, yet strikingly simi similar characteristics of propaganda. Battleship Potemkin, The Goddess, both serve as a representation of the power of film as a medium to influence and alter one's actions and behavior. It's without question that these two films would continue to live on as historical frameworks for future propaganda films.